Welcome, SF Live on site. We're here at the One to One Mining Conference in Las Vegas, and I'm joined by Brent Cook. Well, doesn't you don't need much introduction, but uh, I probably do. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a geologist. We've known each other for a number of years. You've been a newsletter writer. You're now just an advisor to Exploration Insights. I'm subscribed to the newsletter. Highly recommend it. And uh, it's great to catch up. Like, yeah, yeah, it's good, good to, to see you see again. It. Like yeah. it's been a dire two years. We haven't seen much of each other. No. It's been sad. I missed it. I might, I missed this interaction in general here at the conference. Yeah, it's nice to nice to get uh, get going back and meeting people, seeing new stories, and you know when you can listen to someone actually tell you something and look in their eyes, etc. It, it just it helps. Different. Like Zoom is fine. It does the trick, but that first step, yeah. I want it in person. Yeah, always do. I don't know. It's just reading people. Um, you're here at the conference. Your keynote as well. You're presenting. What are you presenting? What I'm going to go through is basically some detailed tips and tricks for due diligence on junior exploration companies. So I'm going to go into, you know, a lot, a lot of geology, drilling, metallurgy, you know, right down to the details that matter and skip the whole big picture. Interesting. Okay. So the presentation will be recorded. And I will be on. So. I, I saw the cameras at least. Oh, so oh should no. be a, a fancy Good. cameras too. It looks like HD too. Like, yeah, but, we'll see who I piss uh, off this time. Uh, so, what what are some of the details? Like, of, of course, everybody says management, project location, and jurisdiction, and yeah, maybe, those are the obvious ones. But it really but, comes down to due diligence. Mm -hmm. If you're evaluating an early stage project, it's you know, what is the concept, the target that the companies take, you know, testing. Do the people know how to test it? And does the data come back and show that it's right or not? For instance, we're going to look at uh, two two companies with their drill hole orientations, okay. and that's really important. It tells yeah. you a lot about what the company thinks. Uh, soil samples, just surface soil samples, where samples are taken, how they're taken, um, those sorts of things are getting to. Okay. Uh, I've noticed a lot more companies doing oriented core drilling these days. Yeah, that's probably one part, but well, that's certainly I'm helpful. assuming. Yeah, so, but yeah. that's yeah, that's. A more detail I'm going into. Okay. But yeah. Interesting. Okay. And to, like I've, I've warned you, I've got to ask you, you've been in the industry for over 30 years. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Think so, for like, so. And one thing I'm trying to figure out, like, is really some of the trends. Like, how has the industry changed over the last 30 years? Yeah, technology's changed a little bit, resolution of IPs, surveys, and things. But here at this conference, for example, like, how does it compare to an event 30 years ago? We've, we've lost a lot of the, uh, Open, you know, open conversations, um, ingenuity. I think uh, people are much more conservative now and, and reserved. It used to be a wild industry, you know, a lot of characters, yeah. fewer and fewer of those. Um, become more professional, I guess, is what you, you would would say is more professional. Okay. Um, ESG has become a much bigger component of yeah. what a lot of people have to deal with, which adds a lot of time and cost. Uh, that's been a change. Certainly, the, the you know the computer technology and those sorts of things have come in and really helped in some respects, no. but in others hindered. In my opinion, um, used to be you know a geologist would go out, do the mapping on the ground, and color and, and you know just the thought that goes behind connecting lines, drawing in a fault no. is so much different than if you just put it all in a you know, on a computer, and it draws it like that. I mean, you get a quick yeah. map, but what you've got is a bunch of blobs that yeah. the geologist didn't really, in my opinion, get to think about. So that's been that's what's been lost yeah. or what's been changed. Interesting. Yeah, because I like taking physical notes personally because mm -hmm. it just logs it differently. I don't. Yeah. I barely look at my notes again, but I know I've taken them. exactly. Yeah, that's sort of the same thing, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, you really uh, still the most important thing in exploration is yeah. you know what's between the. Yeah the geologist's uh, ears and what he's seen in the past. And if all you've seen in the past is on a computer, you really don't know anything. Talking about computers, like, it leads me to the question of AI making sort of inroads into the industry. Where do you stand on that topic? Uh, I think it's useful when you've got a huge database and want to compile it and look at it. I think the less data you've got, the less useful it comes. And certainly in terms of what I've seen generating new targets or discoveries, very, very rarely does that, is that what does it? No. Uh, it's garbage in, garbage out is one of well, the things that, I keep no, hearing a lot quite a bit. It's actually. data in, data out, but there's no, you're missing that one human element of experience, no. in, my, in my view, 
This is, I've seen this before, you know, in Australia, and I'm yeah. looking at the same thing here, like Quentin Henning did. Yeah. Um, you know, in Newfoundland. Yeah. I've seen that in Australia and brought it across. I see this in Newfoundland. That's a huge jump. Yeah. AI couldn't do that, in my opinion. Yeah. That is missing, absolutely. What, what are you seeing here at the conference? Like, what's your objective? You're just meeting with companies as well. What's your objective here? Well, as an, an investor. As an investor. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm catching up on companies that I've invested in. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of new stories that I'm interested in, trying to get a better handle on what, you know, what their potential is really, yeah. what it's going to take to get there. I'm still working with Joe Mazumdo at Exploration Insights, so we communicate, you know, three or four times a week on different things. Uh, so that's that's my goal here. Has your focus changed at all a little bit? Are you still gold fo- that gold copper focus was the biggest it's focus, right? Still like, gold copper nickel focused nickel, yeah. early stage. Yeah, uh, that's still the focus. You see a trend here at the event, like company wise. Is there certain like you always try to find like what's the what's the motto or the trend of the of the conference? Oftentimes it's maybe more battery metals or there's always a bit of an underlying theme. I, well, I guess because this is in Las Vegas, yeah. I'm seeing a lot more. U.S. stories, okay, right, because yeah. it's easy to get to and stuff. So, I don't know if that's a trend or a theme, but there's a lot more, and there's some interesting things going on in terms of reevaluating old districts and yeah. finding, you know, new targets that were are yeah. covered or blind or hadn't been hit before. So there's some new discoveries coming yeah. out of old districts. It's good yeah. to see. Yeah, we're we're filming this on day one, and I think I've had three meetings with companies so far. I'm just thinking about why you mentioned it. Is like I think all three were brownfield. Mm-hmm. Either existing old mines, or there were already some drill holes in. Have you seen any greenfield? Any anybody putting first ever drill holes into something? Because it seems like from a financing perspective as well, we don't see a lot of it. It's all brownfields, like or at least projects that have been dormant for a few years. So a few, I mean, decades. There are not many places on Earth that are, have never been had something done. Um, I looked at something in Ecuador that's I'd I'd been to. 12 years ago, and a new yeah. company's got hold of it. Yeah. That's pretty much greenfields. Um, it's 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 yeah. it's a blending of green and and brown, really. Yeah. For instance, you know, I met with uh, Blackrock, right? Yep. Yeah. And you know, it's an old district. It's 100 years old. Like, but but yeah. you know, they they continue drilling. They seem to have sorted out the structural and stratigraphic control to this. So they've you know, found additional veins where no one had found them before. So those are new discoveries in an old district. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing a lot of. That's, it seems like it. There's not a lot of completely new, new stories yeah. in that regard. Fantastic. Awesome. Brent, thank you so much for your time. Really yeah. appreciate it. Good luck with your presentation later on. Thank you. It's today. Tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, thanks for making the time. Always appreciate it. It's always good to see you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Everybody else, thanks so much for tuning in. We were here in Las Vegas at the One to One Mining Conference at the Venetian Hotel. Brent Cook, follow him, of course. He is on Twitter. You have the weirdest Twitter name, by the way. At Brent I've, I've, I've fixed it. Oh, I've, you did it? I fixed it, yeah. <laughs> Brent Cook Geo now. Okay. Because it was a number or something. Brent, yeah, they, long number that. They gave it never... to me. I don't uh, know how that works. <laughs> Definitely follow Brent. He's got some great commentary on Twitter. And of course, subscribe to Expression Insights. I'm a subscriber as well. Highly recommend it. More on the technical side, but I think the industry needs that. Yeah. And uh, it's been actually lacking in the industry. It's the only real technical newsletter I know. Pretty much. So, fantastic. Thanks so much for, join- uh, for tuning in.